problem 5.2-2. Draw shear and bending moment diagrams for the beam. Here we have a cantilever beam. It is fixed to the wall here. Two point loads applied and also a point moment applied at the end. The first step is to draw a free body diagram and use the equations of static equilibrium to solve for the reaction forces which will be here at the wall. Okay, I've drawn my free body diagram with my reaction forces at the wall. I have a vertical reaction force and a moment. Summing my forces in the y direction, I can solve for that vertical reaction force. I get that it is equal to 7 kips. I have called the point at the wall point A, and summing moments about point A, we get that the moment reaction is equal to 52 kip feet. Okay, I can now draw my shear diagram. I've set up my axes. At point A, we have a point load applied, which is the reaction force, which is equal to 7 kips in the upward direction. So we will get an abrupt jump at x equals 0 feet from 0 up to 7 kips. For the next 4 feet, there are no external loads being applied on the beam, so we will stay at a constant sh internal shear of 7 kips. When we get to a distance of x equals 4 feet from the left end, we have a point load of 4 kips being applied, and it's in the downward direction. So we are going to drop 4 kips from a positive 7 down to a positive 3. Then for the next 6 feet, because there are no external loads being applied, we will stay at a constant 3 kips. When we get to the right end of the beam, we have a point load applied again. It is downward and it is 3 kips. That will drop us to 0. The 6 kip foot moment at the end of the beam does not show up directly on the shear diagram, but it will on the moment diagram. Okay, I've now drawn my axes for my moment diagram. Now, first of all, we see that at the left end of the beam, at A, there is a point moment being applied. And whenever we have a point moment that's being applied in a counterclockwise direction, we get a negative jump, or a downward jump in our bending moment. So right at zero, we will get an abrupt jump down to uh, negative 52 kip feet. Over the next four feet, we can look to our shear diagram to understand what's happening. We have a positive slope equal to seven kips. That means uh, we will have a positive slope on our moment diagram. And we can integrate the uh, shear diagram uh, between zero and four feet to find the change in our moment diagram, which is going to occur from zero to four feet. I'll call this hatched area, area 1, and we will calculate what it is. It's equal to 28 kip feet. So we're going to get a jump in our moment diagram from negative 52 to a value of negative 24 kip feet. Over the next 6 feet, our shear diagram shows that we will have a uh, a more mild slope, equal to 3 kips. And we can integrate the area from 4 feet to 10 feet under the shear diagram to get the change in our moment diagram over the same distance. I'll call this hatched area, area 2, and we'll calculate its area. Its area is 18 kip feet, so we're going to see a increase in our moment diagram from 4 feet to 10 feet, an increase of 18 kip feet, and we will end up at a negative 6 kip feet. And finally, when we get to the right end of the beam, we have a 6 kip foot point moment being applied. It's in the clockwise direction, which means we get an abrupt jump in our moment diagram up 6 kip feet, and we end up at 0. And we're done.